Hello and welcome to the journey back to the great Muslim empires of the world. Today we will be covering the Muslim empires in Africa, the Ottoman Empire, and the Mughal Empire. This video was made through the hard work and dedication of Ben Nagel and Rocco Patel. The Empire of Ghana was located in West Africa and it lasted from the 9th to the 11th century BCE. Ghana got its name from the title of the ruler of the Soninke people. The empire grew rich from taxing traders and controlled trade routes that traveled through the empire. The most important trade items at the time were gold, which came from the forest between the Niger and Senegal rivers, and salt, which came from the Sahara Desert. The king of Ghana became so powerful he could demand gifts of gold from neighboring tribes. Muslim Amoravids conquered Ghana in the year 1076 and Ghana never regained its full power. The Empire of Mali was also located in West Africa and flourished between the year 1235 and the 1400s. Like Ghana, Mali grew wealthy from taxing the trade of gold and salt. Its currency was gold dust. Mali had two significant rulers, Sunjata and Mansa Musa. Sunjata was a good ruler who re-established the gold salt trade in West Africa and promoted agriculture. His capital, Nayani, became a center of commerce and trade. Mansa Musa expanded Mali's borders and divided the empire systematically into provinces. He also gave away enormous amounts of gold while on a Hajj to Mecca. He also built many mosques in the city of Timbuktu. Ibn Battuta, a native to Mali, became very famous when he spent 27 years traveling all over the Muslim world. The Songhai Empire was the next empire to rise in West Africa. It came about after the Songhai people conquered Mali during the 1400s and the empire lasted until 1591. Like Mali, the Songhai Empire had two important rulers, Sunni Ali and Askiya Muhammad. Sunni Ali was a military genius who conquered Timbuktu and Jene on his quest to build an empire. Askiya Muhammad overthrew Sunni Ali's son and turned out to be an excellent administrator who set up an efficient tax system and appointed ministers of the army, the navy, treasury, and agriculture. The Songhai were eventually conquered by Moroccans who had superior weaponry and battle tactics. The Islamic religion spread through the sub-Saharan empires through trade instead of conquest, like it did in the Sahara. The Ottoman Empire started out as a small Muslim Anatolian kingdom led by a leader named Osman, whose army contained Ghazis. This small group was expanded over the years through Osman's successors and followers. They bought land and conquered other emirs. Instead of having archers on horseback, the Ottomans had foot soldiers who carried powerful guns and cannons, which made them very successful in battle. The Ottomans were not cruel to the people they conquered. They treated peasants well and were religiously tolerant towards others with only a small tax. The empire's growth was suddenly halted by Timur the Lame of Asia, who was the first to defeat the Ottomans in battle. However, he soon turned his attention to Southeast Asia and left the Ottomans alone. Arguably one of the most important sultans in Ottoman history was Mehmed II, who took a very important city called Constantinople, which was already losing power and was decreasing in population. Mehmed used his massive cannons and giant army to burst through the walls of the city after a seven-week siege. He also had his massive fleet of ships attacking the city from the water. They were easily able to overcome the city and take it over. The city was renamed Istanbul and made the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Another very important sultan was Suleiman the Lawgiver. He not only expanded the empire farther into the Middle East, but he also improved other things such as organizing a law code and creating millet communities where people could practice their own religion and be ruled by their own local leaders. He also had soldiers called Janissaries who were trained as young children with a good education and raised under good living conditions. Young Christian boys were often drafted into the sultan's service as part of the Dev Shirme policy. The Ottomans also became good at poetry, history, geography, astronomy, mathematics, and architecture. The Ottoman Empire stood for a long time, but after Suleiman died, a legacy of corrupt rulers and a fight for the throne led to the fall of the empire. The Ottoman Empire finally collapsed in 1914. As we move towards the Mughal Empire in India, Muslim sultans were still at rule. One sultan who came to power was named Babur. He started his empire in Delhi. He was a very successful ruler, but was not as successful as his grandson Akbar. Babur's army had heavy weapons and artillery just like the Ottomans. Akbar used his abilities to unify 100 million people and was also religiously tolerant. He abolished the tax on other religions and allowed his wives to practice whatever religion they wanted. Both Hindus and Muslims could even reach high office. 
Todar Mal was the government official under Akbar who set up the efficient tax system of the Mughal Empire. Architecture improved under Akbar, as it is shown in the grandeur of his palace. One of Akbar's most famous successors was Shah Jahan. His passions included beautiful buildings and his wife. When she died, Jahan built the Taj Mahal as a tomb and memorial for his wife. The marble of the Taj Mahal is said to change color as the sun moves across the sky. Aurangzeb was another important ruler who was the grandson of Jahangir and the great-grandson of Akbar. He was one of the last powerful leaders of the Mughals. Even though he expanded the empire to its largest size ever, he was not very good to his people. He was religiously intolerant and also brought back the tax on non-Muslims. He destroyed Hindu monuments and banned the construction of new temples. His reign led to the fall of the Mughal Empire. People could not trust him. He drained the empire's resources and brought famine to the area. The Mughal Empire began to slowly decline. The Mughal Empire eventually fell and submitted to the power and control of the British East India Company.